This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by AMD. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the episode of Rumor Roundup. We are at a familiar backdrop. This is the show where we take all the rumors from the week, we smash them, bash them, and condense them into one rumor show for you so you didn't have to read all the sites in the world. It's the only video you gotta watch to know what you missed. Uh, this week, we're gonna talk about Apple and Samsung being the very best frenemies in the world. Some Galaxy Note 3 shenanigans are going on. Verizon folks might finally be getting the HTC One of their dreams, and an iPhone 5S, we might know a little bit more about what it's going to have. This is Rumor Roundup, I'm your host John Rettinger, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's start with the Apple and Samsung news. These two love to hate each other. Evidently, Apple is switching back to Samsung for LCD screens. Lawsuits clearly won't stop Apple from partnering with Samsung, which means it may cut orders from other partners such as Sharp and LG. Sucks to be them. Now, the reason behind the move is likely a nod to the South Korean company's ability to produce touch screens using thin glass in super large quantities very fast. The glass is used in everything from the iPhone and the iPad, MacBook. Samsung is also one of Apple's largest suppliers of processors and memory. Part of me though kind of misses the old Steve Jobs way of doing things. We had a similar situation back when the iPhone first came out and they were trying to get all the flash storage out there. Essentially, Apple went to all the supply chains that sold flash storage and said, listen, give it all to us. For the next five years, we will overpay for it. Essentially, that created a shortage for every other company. I'm kind of surprised Apple is not just gonna go in and snap up uh, a supply chain that creates displays and buy all the raw materials and create a bottleneck for everybody else. It makes for a fun story. The Galaxy Note 3, supposedly, it's going to pack a Snapdragon Android processor, a more powerful chip than the Snapdragon 600 in the Galaxy S4, as well as a pretty similar 13 megapixel shooter. The news was first reported by ZDNet Asia, which said that Sony's next Xperia smartphone is also going to offer a Snapdragon 800 processor. The quad core chip will launch with speeds up to 2.3 gigahertz, although it's totally unclear if Samsung's going to use that clock speed. That's just crazy speed, but Samsung does love to win, at least on spec, so it should be interesting. It also supports LTE and Cat4 LTE Advanced, in addition to 802.11ac Wi Fi support. And for max screen resolutions of 2560 by 2048 pixels. Damn. Make no mistake though, just because Qualcomm's new mobile CPU supports technology doesn't mean Samsung's necessarily gonna add that hardware to next generation Note. Now, the Galaxy Note family was last refreshed during IFA 2012 in September of last year, and we think that's when the Note 3 is gonna make its debut. All right, so if you're on Verizon and you've been looking longingly at your friends with an HTC One, your prayers might be answered. Slash Gear recently obtained leaked images from EVLeaks. It shows a Verizon product with the One branding. We're not too surprised though to see Verizon jumping on board, although it does seem a bit odd Carrier wouldn't just offer the phone sooner rather than later. HTC One, though, is reportedly set to launch on Verizon early summer, which means we might see it pop up really any week now. Another phone, dubbed the T6, could launch in the fall to replace the Droid DNA entirely. So we largely believe that the iPhone 5S can look the same as the iPhone 5. That follows Apple's historical release pattern, and it's probably rather expensive to totally retool machines to create a new brand industrial design every stinking year. So a little new rumor out of China suggests that Apple will decrease the bezel around the screen so that it fits closer to the sides of the iPhone, similar to what you see on the iPad mini, which me is awesome. The story first popped up from Weifang Network, which also said that Apple plans to increase the number of pixels in its screen from 730,000 on the retina display to 1.5 million pixels. We're gonna know this information very soon. Apple's WWDC kicks off in June, and we expect we'll hear much more about iOS 7. Software that's gonna power the next iPhone, although we believe the device won't launch though until early fall. But whatever they announce, we will be there live to show you everything that's coming. So of course, stay tuned to Techno Buffalo. We take a minute to thank our friends and sponsors at AMD. What's up everyone? John Render from Techno Buffalo here in our last video. We had some fun with this AMD Temos chip, but now it's time to get down to business. It's not a spy tool, it's the AMD A6 APU. It's actually a thing you're going to want to use to do games on, do your computing on, and do everything you do on a computer. So what I do most on a computer is I want to play some games. So I installed the game that we play the most here at Techno Buffalo Office. We actually have pretty heated Left 4 Dead battles. So we installed Steam on the sky, put Left 4 Dead 2 on it, and I want to see how it performed. It's kind of crazy to see something that looks like this eventually going to be in a package that looks like this. This is going to be the new A-series chip. It's going to power pretty awesome looking devices, but I really want to see that awesome look to so just skin deep or if we can actually play some games. Let's go ahead and take a look. 
I knew we could handle everything on the lower setting, so we thought it'd be more interesting and a better test of the machine's capabilities to bump it up. So we kicked it up to 1080p. We kept the film grain at about 30%. Effect detail, we went to high. The model texture detail also got kicked up to high. I wanted to see how it performed, if we had any frame rate dropping, what the boot time was, if the fans kicked on like crazy, and just how overall gameplay was. Uh, booted up pretty quick, about as quick as it does on the i3 rigs that we usually play on here at the office. We didn't really see any frame rate dropping at all. It was a very pleasant experience. In fact, after a few minutes, I forgot that this monitor was plugged into a computer that looked like a spy equipment. Uh, it just worked really well. We didn't have any sort of loss. The gameplay was smooth. The fans barely kicked on. The whole experience was eerily quiet. We came away really impressed with the performance, especially for something that's still in pre-production form. And if it can handle 1080p gaming, it can obviously handle the rest of the stuff you're going to throw at it. It can handle your Photoshop, your Microsoft Office, uh, your email, video watch whatever else you want to do it'll rock it so what's the final verdict here if you're looking for a new computer and if you're shopping when you are fortunate enough to have the a series on the market you're going to owe it to yourself to take a look it represents a really great low energy consumption really portable option it doesn't sacrifice any power that you get with other mobile processors so keep a close lookout for these systems that are just starting to come to market step aside from the rumors for a minute to remind you about another show we got going on on another YouTube channel called The Tech Feed, where I host a show called Techno and Buffalo's Driven. We cover all the news from the world of cars. This week, we got a ton of awesome stuff to talk about, including the power of the Corvette C7 and other awesome tech news that I want to share with you. You should check it out. Thank you guys for watching the episode of Rumor Roundup. Hope you enjoyed. Please give the video a thumbs up. We most definitely appreciate it. I'm John Rettinger, and I'll see you next video.